we are going to talk about why we photograph. And uh, we're also going to look at some recent photos. And that includes a recent photo from a member of the iPhoneography Podcast Facebook group, uh, one that we've chosen to talk about as well. So um, stay tuned for that. All this coming up. Alrighty. Uh, you know what? It, we're a little late, I know. Um, normally the podcast would come out this morning as, as we record this. It is Wednesday, July 3rd. But we normally record Monday nights. Monday night was Canada Day. It was like it was Canada Day. And I had intended to shoot the, um, the fireworks in town here. But the mosquitoes had other plans. So I said to heck with it. I wasn't going to stand out there and get eaten alive just for 20 minutes of fireworks. And um, uh, let's see. And then last night, we had fully intended to come on here, but I wasn't feeling very good. So we put it off for another day. And here we are. And I am welcomed by my good friend and co-host, Dave Podner. Hello, David. Hey, Greg. Always glad to be on. So we thought we'd talk about uh, something that um, I think, if, I, if memory serves me, uh, when I was on Shane Mawson's live live stream one time, we talked about this same thing. But uh, Dave and I have never really talked about it on this show, and that is, why do we photograph? Like, why do we practice photography? Um, I mean, there there are many reasons, and everybody will have their own reasons. Uh, you know, some of them could be, you know, I got some notes here, so I'm going to kind of jot or look at them here. But, um, you know, it could be to capture, preserve memories, uh, express creativity through images, you know, um, you document unique perspectives and moments, different things like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can we can parse the information from wherever until we're blue in the face. But what we really want to know is, why do we photograph? So, Dave, what, what do you think it is that makes you want to take pictures? I think for me, it's sh sharing experience. Because yeah. there are certain things I'd like to, you know, e things either happen or something I view or something I see that I just go, wow, that is neat. I'm going to get really technical here. Neat. Or, boy, it'd be great if, you know, other people could see this because I this is so nice looking or unusual or something on that nature. And having a phone on, having an, you know, a phone on you, which for the majority of people these days is always stuck to your, um, uh, kind of stuck to your body at all times. So you're always have a camera close to yourself. So yeah. you don't have to worry about, oh, some, this amazing thing happened and there, oh, I wish I could show you, but we just can't see it right now, which kind of kills the whole sharing experience. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there are, I, I'm thinking back like, um, and, and some of this is going to include running, uh, because when I run generally, I'm running by myself outside of races or as Ruth says you're not racing you're running because you're not running to win I'm like yeah. no I, I realize I'm not running to win I'm not delusional but um you know there are times like running in the neighborhood we had a thunderstorm that looked like it was about to come in and there was this just amazing striking striking cloud formation and it was a harsh line of dark on one side completely blue and then just like it looked fake, uh, just a silvery border and then dark, dark clouds. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. I've never seen that in my life before. I'll probably never see it again. I got to take a picture of that and then run as quickly as I can to get out of the storm. But, you know, it, or a couple times when I've done trail runs. You know, you're in the trail. Literally, you're because of the way the trail goes, you get disorientated in terms of am I facing, you know, it's like on a road when you're going on a road or, or just walking along a road, you know where you are pretty much. If you're in a trail, you're like, okay, 
which direction am I going? Other than going, knowing you're going uphill or downhill, you really have no idea where you're pointed. Because a lot of times you're covered up by trees, so you don't even know where the sun is. And just saying, very few people will either be able to, because the trail races are, ne are never easy. Even just walking the trails, you have to be in pretty decent shape and be pretty mobile. And, um, you know, just like, I want to take a picture or do a video because this is something, at least for me and for a lot of people, we consider different and unique and something that I just want to share and experience. Yeah. So sharing. Yeah. And also, I would say, uh, if you've noticed a lot of stuff for me in the last, oh, I don't know, month and a half, it's, oh, my God, she's so cute. Yeah. When it when yeah. it comes to pictures of Daisy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like a new new member of the family, right? So. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, how else can anybody share? Like, how how else can, how else can anybody um, uh, be into that? You know, take part, I guess, in that experience, other than by getting a photo from somebody who's actually there, like. You know, it could be a, like a, a sporting event or a, a family mm -hmm. thing where, you know, somebody from a thousand miles away couldn't make it. That's putting them in the moment, especially with a live photo. You know, that, that puts them in the moment mm -hmm. um, when they get uh, something shared with them, like a, like a picture or a video. Um, you know, for, for me, it's uh, I live here. I live here in Owen Sound, Ontario, Canada, and probably 99% of the people that I associate with online and whatnot don't live here. They're not here. So if I'm here and no one else is, and I want to share what I'm seeing with other people, that's the only way to do it is to take a picture and, um, you know, share it with them. So, um, it's, you know, you know, there's such thing as oversharing too. Some people overshare. They, they, um, you know. So, like I said, I, I live, I live here. I have, you know, there's things around here, this area that I could experience, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of really cool and interesting and nice things around here to photograph. Um, you know, like okay, I've I've got waterfalls and stuff like that. Well, Shane doesn't have waterfalls in Australia. You know, not at least not where he is. He, he's in a very flat, wide open part. He says if you stand on mm -hmm. a tuna can, you can see for miles. And you know, so when when I share an image of of a nice waterfall or a river or something like that, um, mm -hmm. that I've taken a long exposure of or whatever, you know, hopefully he really enjoys that. Um, look at Scott Baker. Scott Baker lives right at the ocean on the east coast of Canada. His sunsets are amazing. Um, can I get sunsets here? Sure. But, uh, he's got some, um, landscape stuff or, you know, some rock formations and things like that, that I don't have here, or at least not, you know, if I, if I wanted to drive, uh, maybe an hour or whatever, I can, I could probably get to something like that, but it wouldn't be the ocean. Um, Andy Green, his, his stuff is amazing. He, he's got, over in England there, the, the shoreline is, you know, oh, there's massive rocks and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, there's so many different places that have so many different things um, that I'm so grateful that people can share them through whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever, or, or even just through a, a, like an iMessage or whatever. You know, it, it's, it's just a, it, it's a wonderful time to be alive, <laughs> you know, so... Um, but you know, I mean, there there are a lot of other reasons that I photograph. Um, so, like another one is to um, keep the memories, and you know, the, the nice thing about the iPhone is that it creates these memories, and it puts together like a video slideshow type of thing with images, and 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 if if there's video there, it'll put a video in it, and and it'll make a like a, a one minute short video to music mm -hmm. that I could share with family or whatever. So. Um, like, you know, what would be another reason that, that you would photograph? 
one way and, and i'll go this is somewhat kind of going into editing than straight photography but i consider it all one thing um just doing something creative because yeah. i don't have drawing ability um you know or or, or painting ability or you know um building stuff with my hands stuff like that i'm not good at that and could i get good at it maybe i did maybe i just don't have the hand-eye coordination per se but when i get to the more creative edits you know some of the weirder ones that may or may not work but some of the ones which are just kind of it's just a good release for creativity yeah you know it it, it, it it's a stress relief it's literally I took a photo. I'm just going to sit down and get lost in the editing process. Yeah. You know, kind of try to zone out everything else that's going on and just try to edit this photo and try here and move here and see if something else is, you know, see if, oh, that isn't working. Let me try down this path. Oh, it didn't work. I'll try another path. Or, you know, a, a, as Bob Ross said, happy little accidents. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it, it, it it's a little bit of therapy, a little creativity release. And sometimes that happens on photos that I plan ahead and like, okay, I'm going to a location or I'm going to be in a particular place and I want to take this photo and then I edit it. When sometimes it's, I took a photo and it wasn't necessarily a great photo. Composition wasn't great. Lighting wasn't great for whatever reason. Um, you know, sometimes you, things just come against you. But then you go and say, oh, when I edit it, it turned into something different. It turns, you know, just it just so, and even if no one else likes it, which it's always nice to have other people like your stuff. But even if no one likes it, it's still that nice release that you're getting. Yeah. And that's something yeah. I really enjoy too. I agree with that 100% because as you know, as a as a photographer, which is what we are, we are artists and artists create stuff. You know, we 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 have this you know, this desire to create you know, a photo or 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 a piece of art of, of some sort like some some people use like an iPad to, to make a digital work of art. Um, but there's times if I haven't been out taking pictures in quite a while, there's times when I just get so antsy and I just got to go out and I got to shoot something. Um, case in point was if just a few days ago when I wanted to go to one of my favorite places and, and one of the pictures is in our recent photos that we'll cover later. But, um, you know, I just wanted to go out and, take a picture of something so you know i go to this place and i i was there for probably an hour and a half uh you know but but and and the editing is also part of that you know you i, I go out i take these pictures i get home and, and even if it's a picture i take on a walk with the dog you know i can't wait to get home and start editing it you know i don't have a massive ed editing um regimen but it's just nice to make something out of that image that's more to what I like, more to my liking. You know, as as nice as, as a scene could as, as it could be, you always want to give it your own little flair, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, you put your own touch on it. At least that's how I look at it. So, I mean, you know, to, to your point about just creating something, yeah, that that's a really, really big reason for me. Uh, as to why I do this stuff, um, yeah. And no, I would I, say I, even I was. Oh, sorry, great. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I say that's even going to exploring new apps for editing, and, oh, yeah. and sometimes not even in the Lightroom Photo Mater dark room where you're just taking a photo and trying to correct the issues that all cameras have, not just iPhone cameras. But you know, yeah. no camera can exactly get what's actually in your eye because yeah, everyone's yeah. eyes are different you know everyone has different light and dark sensitivity and everything else so you want to get it where it's sometimes you want to get exactly what you saw and sometimes yeah. you want to get it what you saw in your mind 
and what you were imagining and, and the, the emotion that came out of the scene, not mm-hmm. a literal look. Basically impressionist versus realist in terms of painting. Yeah. But even some of the, the, like I said, it's exploring the apps. Like uh, someone suggested R&I be, for mm-hmm. some of the edits from, from the show um, like a month or so ago. And I downloaded it and I use it occasionally. But then I saw an ad inside of R&I for an app called R&I Aero. Which does simulations of the of infrared photos? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like, no, well, I'll give it a try. You know, experiment, try something different, and yep. see why. Why would I want to use this app versus another app? Why would I need, or should I even use it? And you know, am I getting and just to get all Marie Kondo? And I'm, it's a, it's an old reference, but is yeah. it something giving me joy? Am I enjoying yeah. using this app or is it like, eh, it's an app. It's okay. It's not okay. I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm never going to use it. It'll automatically take it off or it's, it's one of those apps. Like I like the way it does things for me in terms of editing and everything else. So therefore I'm going to keep it and use it. Yeah. And to that point about the apps, there's so many different ones that, you know, you can, you can find new channels of your creativity, you know, in a, in a new app that you have never used before, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, I'm not a real big user of apps like, uh, visionist or watercolor or things like that, but I just love once in a while opening the app with a certain image and seeing what it does. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it kind of, you know, gives me a good feeling to see what comes mm-hmm. out of it. Um, like, okay. So, and, Dale Lotherington is in the house. He's he's yeah. a another one of our Aussie friends. Um, who, by the way, spoiler alert, folks, will be on the next show. Uh, so he says, create. You're creating photos, not making photos, and that is true. You're you're creating a photograph. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you're not you're not. Or, or he says, creating photos, not taking photos. That's it. Not making. It's take. He says, not taking. And yeah. and he says, no one complains about the size of a brush that the painter uses. Another true statement. I mean, Mm -hmm. you can't look at a painting and say, you know, oh, he used this brush or that brush or his, he used a brush that was too big or too small because we don't know unless you're, I mean, an art critic that that does know, but uh, you know, I don't know if anybody can really know like, but anyway, um, so, uh, you know, all these different apps that are available and that's the wonderful thing about using the iPhone with this stuff is, the choices we have are almost endless, uh, you know, and it's so sad that it's not that way for Android. Um, you know, yes, they have a lot of different choices, but there's just not as many. It, and that's just a fact um, for for them as there is for the iPhone users. Um, I think it's just because it's, it's so much easier to, to easier to develop for iOS than it is for Android. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before, but... Um, you know, hey, it's a, but it, it's just, there, there's so many different channels and avenues that you can go down, uh, you know, with mm-hmm. this stuff. And, um, you know, so like another reason to photograph for me would be to um, uh, do research or something, you know, like when I was doing, doing the book that I did on macro, uh, mm-hmm. I, it gave me a good reason to go and shoot macro photos. Um, and, there's even a chapter in there about research, you know, it's, it's a small chapter, but it's a chapter about research and how you can use the, the, the camera, especially like a macro with a lens and whatnot as a tool for doing research. Um, you know, that's th- just a, another, uh, uh, avenue to go down. Um, uh, you know, uh, you've, you've captured images of visiting family members in the past, you know, so there's another right. good reason. Yeah, I mean, it, because, and this may be a bit on the morbid side, unfortunately, but when Ruth's mom passed, we were able to get together a really nice slideshow, the show at the viewing. Mm-hmm. And most of those images were taken with the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. And the slideshow was created on an iPhone. So, you know, it, it basically just not only taking the photos as they happen, but a way to remember them later on. 
Yeah. And and the like, same goes on a, on a lighter yeah. side. The same goes with when you went to see your dad. In exactly. Palm Springs. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that, that's an opportunity that you don't get every day. And Very you've true. got all these memories from that from that mm-hmm. trip. And, um, you know, I mean, can you imagine if you weren't into photography? True. Yeah. You would not. Especially, <laughs> yeah, especially some of the photos where like when we went up on the tram. Yeah. You know, because the last time I visited him, at least 20, yeah, 20 years ago, yeah, uh, the tram was down for repair. Yeah. So, you know, the fact of next time I go out there, which I don't know when, but next time I go out there, the tram could be down again. There could be inclement weather. Probably not, but there could be bad weather. Yeah. Palm Springs they inclement get, weather? Nah. <laughs> okay. Once in a while, they get some rain. Once yeah. in a while, like like yeah. five times a year. But, you know, or it could just be, even though it doesn't seem like, it, it, just like in Canada, nothing shuts down for snow. They don't well, really it has shut to be pretty for bad heat. first. It does That's have to be pretty said. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, same thing out there with their heat. You know, yeah. it's not, it, you know, it, if we would have, like, a couple of weeks ago, I forget when, but, you know, we had the, the, the heat dome, and it was mid-90s and humid. Yeah. And they said, okay, don't do anything outside between, like, 9 a.m. and, like, 7 p.m. And even outside of that, limit it because it's hot, it's dangerous, it's everything else. And that was a really unusual experience. And for him, the high today was 112 degrees. Yeah, that's pretty warm. It, yeah, and it's a dry heat though out there, is it not? It's not it, humid. It, 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 no, no, it is exceptionally dry. Yeah. <clears throat> um, now it is. A, it's around eleven degrees above normal, so the wind's making it feel cooler. So it only feels like one hundred and seven instead of one hundred and eight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, humidity sixteen percent. Yeah. So it, it, but that has its own issues where, you know, even if you don't feel hot, you'll dry out quickly out there. And you'll burn yeah. quickly. But, yeah. you know, the but fact you, if it's a hot 112, it doesn't shut anything down. Right. Yeah. And, and lucky for you, I don't know, it was, what, mid-90s when you were out there, roughly, if I remember correctly? Yeah, it was mid-90s. We peaked a couple times around 100. Yeah. So you had opportunities to see and, and do all kinds of stuff, you know, because they mm-hmm. you know, obviously they didn't shut things down. And... Because that's, you that's are a normal day. That's a normal day for him. Yeah, yeah. So, and because you're you have an interest in photography like that, mm-hmm. you took lots of pictures, you know, and, oh, yeah. and you have those memories. Um, mm-hmm. So, and like you, you said, know, and like you said, live photos are an amazing thing. Oh yeah, and yeah. When I think of live, that... when, I, when I think of live photos, I I always think of what Mike James told me about. A live photo he had with his mother before she passed. He can go back on that photo. It's a three second clip where he can hear her voice and he can take mm-hmm. that as long as he can preserve that image. Um, he can take that with him, you know, for the rest of his life, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and luckily it was a live photo. Um, right. Uh, you know, again, I, I don't do enough live photos. I especially when I'm around my grandson, I should start doing live photos more. But I, I do enough. I do a fair bit of video when but, I'm with yeah. them. But uh, yeah. it, which is you know pretty good too. But um, but you you you're t- you take a lot of live photos. In fact, just yeah, about every I have picture it on you by take default. is live photos. Yeah. yeah, I have it on by default, and, and mainly because there is a advantage when you're taking anything that may or may not be moving. Of yeah. being able to say, oh, that moved, I'll shift the photo half a second earlier or half a second yeah. later, and then you get that perfect pose, or or, yep. or a better pose, I should say, or yeah. something else going on. And I don't really think, unlike, I know when, they, when live photos first came out, people were saying how the live photos were worse quality. You really don't notice a difference. You know? It's re- at least for me. It's really hard to notice when it's a live photo and not a live photo anymore. Well, I think I think it gives you like a full resolution image. Right. So yeah, you know it should be fine. Anything that you've yeah. sent me for the um, for the our recent photo segment, if it's a live photo, it looks great. 
Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, and it and doesn't honestly, look bad most, at all. It, maybe if I blew it up to um, like an eight by 10 or, you know, like it, it larger, it would make a difference. I don't know. I don't print out. The only thing I generally print out are, you know, little snapshot size. Yeah. You know, yeah. anything more than that, I really don't print out. And that that turns out great. Those little, you know, three by five, four by sixes. I don't know what the metric equivalent is of that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, when I talk <laughs> when I talk photo sizes, I always talk inches as well. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, there's plenty of good reasons to, to photograph. And, you know, I think we've covered pretty much why we do it. Uh, I can't think of any other reason offhand as to why we would do it, but um, uh, I mean, it's uh, you know. Well, it's I would say we... I, now w- one thing that I can I think we can say outside of your book, uh, one reason we don't, but some people do, is it's their job. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I'm thinking like Mark Sadowski. You know, his second gig is wedding photography. Yeah, yeah. You know, he uses, he doesn't really take photos with his iPhone. He uses his Fujifilm mm-hmm. cameras, which I understand, you know, it, it, there are certain things, limitations of the iPhone where if I was a guest at a wedding and the picture turned out a certain way, eh, no big deal. If you're the photographer being paid thousands of dollars, and it turned out a certain way because you're using an iPhone instead of a uh, you know something that candles that uh, maybe zoom better or low light better. Yeah. The bride and groom may be a little te- little miffed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and Shane Moston, he used to put on f- yeah. f- photography workshops. Like he he does mm-hmm. he does the odd wedding, but he used to put on workshops for people too. And I mean, so there's another uh, you know professional. Um, angle for for taking images um so all right well uh i think we've pretty much covered you know uh, this was a kind of an impromptu uh an impromptu um subject choice uh but uh you know i'm sure and like i said before everybody has their own reasons for doing it and um if you're watching this video and uh you've made it this far (laughs) go ahead and leave a comment and let us know why you uh, photograph. We'd be interested to know. Um, so, all right. Well, we will move on now to our recent photos. And, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have one image that we're going to look at from, um, uh, a member of the Facebook group who put a, a, a hashtag on my recent photos. Now we're going to change it up for the next time. What we're going to do is I'm going to put a post in the group about this whole thing again. You know, if you want to have your image talked about in our recent photos, um, just comment on the post. Don't make a new post. Like I said the first time, you know, I think I think that was a bad choice on my part. I think what we'll do is I'll put the post on the Facebook group. I'll pin it to the top as a featured post and just... Put a comment in there with your image if you want us to talk about it. And understand that in order to show it here on the YouTube channel, I have to download it. But what I do is I'll once I've shown it and it, it goes into the podcast app where you can see your images while we're talking about them. After that, they're deleted. They're gone. I, I do not keep anybody's photos. So um, and even Dave's, I think I've deleted most of his the ones that he sent me, sends me. But. Um, so when you see the, when you see the post comment and, th- and when you do that, it's be nice to, to get a little information about the image, you know, let us know how you took it. Let us know mm-hmm. what app you, you used to, um, to edit it and all that stuff. You know, you don't have to, don't have to go into great detail, but it would be nice just to see, you know, what your mindset was when you, when you did the edit and when you took the shot and things like that. So yeah. you don't have to I say where even- it is. Yeah, I, I would even say if you really if you wanted to know, let us know what cam what what phone you used. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's, it's always curious to see someone who's you know you see this photo and it turned out amazing and it was taken with an iPhone ten. 
yeah. or oh, was yeah, taken sure. with an iPhone 8 or 7. It's like, here's an old 7S I had that isn't even supported by Apple anymore. But yeah. I'm still using it. And I didn't turn it in, so I'm still using it as a phone or an iPod Touch. And yep. I took this photo with an old phone. And because so many people are still hung up on, oh, I need to take an iPhone I need the latest phone or two years at the latest. Other than that, I can't take good pictures. No, <laughs> it helps in certain, certain situations, but not always. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you used a different app other than the native camera app, you know, put that on there too. Uh, uh -huh. let, let us know what you're using. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through ours. Uh, I've got them ready to go here and I'm, I'm going to, We'll go through mine first, Dave, because that's just the order I've got them ready to go. Okay. And then mm -hmm. we'll go through yours. So we got three each, and then we're going to do the, um, the the member's photo at the end. So uh -huh. uh, I will share my screen. There we go. Okay. There is my first image. Ah, um, okay. It's a day lily. Now, again, mm -hmm. folks... On in the audio and the on the podcast uh, app that you're listening on, hopefully if it's a if it can play an enhanced podcast, look on your screen and you'll see it. Um, I was just out walking the dog and I uh, I took my uh, reflex G series macro long range macro lens with me um, mm -hmm. just because it's easy to carry in my pocket and and I saw this day lily and I thought you know what just the way the sun's hitting it I thought. I, I got to capture it. So uh, the dog was very patient with me, and um, you know I, I was able to 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 snag this picture of it. And uh, I'm trying to think of how I did the edit. I think it might have been in dark room. Um, mm, okay. And what I had to actually desaturate just the orange because it was just a little too strong. Um, I, I think it looks a little more natural the way it is, mm -hmm. but uh, you know. And macro photography tip that you will see in my book, focus on the stamen. Uh, those who are watching uh, on YouTube, you can see my cursor move around. And these little things in the middle here, this is the stamen of the, of the, of the flower. Pretty much every flower has these things. And I always think that that should be the focal point of a macro image. Um, you know, wherever else, where whatever else falls into that focal plane is a bonus. Like over here on this petal, this edge mm -hmm. of the petal falls in on it. Um, some of the texture of the petal falls in on it. Uh, but make sure you get the stamen in sharp focus. So it's hard. It's hard sometimes to get them all sharp. You likely won't get them all sharp because these macro lenses have such a very um, shallow depth of field that right. you, you know, you're only going to get maybe well you, you if you're lucky you'll get all of them. depends on the flower too i guess and how they're situated but um at least try to get Let's the, say that, the, yeah this this flower has a good amount of spread on it also yeah yeah um so and it's good to uh it's good to get the um uh the one closest to you of all the stamen in the, in the image, the one closest to you should be the one. Of, it's kind of like when you're taking a picture of a person, like a portrait. And if their head's on a tilt or not a tilt, but a, uh, on an angle, you know, okay. the eye closest to the camera should be the one to get the focus. So, um, but yeah, that, so that's a, a day mm -hmm. lily. Yeah. And that is something I found out is, when there's oranges and reds, it's so easy for that just to over dominate. Yeah. It yeah. Just to, without even edit, editing, it just kind of boosted up. And I think it's partially because that's just, if you just not looking at a photo in detail, but just kind of scrolling through quickly, people like that because it gets your attention. Yeah. Yeah. But if you stop and look at it, it's kind of like, oh, that got my attention, but it's overpowering everything else. So, you know, it, uh, Lightroom Mobile, Photomator um, also have abilities to saturate and desaturate individual colors, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and that's exactly what I did here too. Um, yeah. Now, another thing that you can do when you're taking the photo is if you use a camera app that has a histogram, and if that histogram can show the three different color channels, the red, green, and the blue, chances are the red might be off the edge on the overexposure side. So bring your exposure down until that red stays within in the sides of the uh, of the histogram. And because you could always brighten it up later, you know, mm-hmm. you can always, um, uh, you know, brighten the image without and try not to clip the red. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of an editing, um, trick, I guess, or something that you have to get used to doing, but that's another way to, to make sure that you don't blow out the detail of, of the red or, or the orange or whatever in the flower. So that's my first one. My second one. So I, I mentioned earlier that I went to one of my favorite places to shoot, and this is down down at a river, um, downstream from a local waterfall that is probably the most popular tourist attraction in the area. Um, but I I like going to this place here because there's usually nobody else there, um, at least not. Stay, staying at that spot, taking pictures or whatever. A few people had walked through. There's a, you know, up behind me where I was standing, there's a steel bridge that goes across the river. You know, so while I was there for about the hour, hour and a half I was there, there was probably three or four times people walked through. Um, but, you know, like I said, they never stayed. But what I was doing here was I was trying out, uh, so Reflex sent me a telephoto and a wide angle G-series lens. And I got the case to put these lenses on. So now I'm really enjoying these things. Uh, This was with the, I believe, with the telephoto on the main camera. Uh, Now, Mm. one of the advantages of putting a lens on the camera like that is you can still get uh, the uh, uh, 48 megapixels out of the frame. But as soon as you start doing long exposure, you're going back to 12. Just it's just the way it works. Right. But I was also using a, um, a neutral density filter and the circular polarizer, so mm. it, it, I was able to really control this. This is what you call taking a photographic approach to um, to iPhone photography. Um, you know, I was I put the filters on so that I can really get a grip of or get a, get a handle on the the shutter speed that I wanted to use to to, to control how the water looked mm-hmm. um and you know as as far as editing goes I edited this one I believe it was in Lightroom mobile and um yeah. you know it came out pretty good I think mm-hmm. before I even started doing the edit but I do like to make sure that um things like you know the water's not blown out too much or whatever uh i mean that's uh i always set the exposure with the zebra those zebra things zebra Mm -hmm. stripes okay yeah and okay so in this image here right at where the water's coming over the rock right in that point there would be the brightest part of the image and i always make sure that i set my my iso to the lowest point and my shutter speed i set it to the I, i bring it the shutter speed is a value of one over something. And right. I always slow it down, I guess you could say, you know, one okay. over one, one over two, one over three or whatever. And, and I always bring it up, I guess you could say, a, a little faster each time until those little zebra stripes disappear. Mm, and okay. then I take the shot because then I know I'm not going to lose detail in that brightest point. It doesn't matter about the blacks. They can they can be brought back, but you cannot bring mm-hmm. back any lost detail in the whites. Right. So, um, and then I, I think this is going to be the the cover image of my next book that I'm working on. Um, mm. I'm I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna say how long it's gonna take because I don't want to be pressured into no. a deadline. And that's the but nice thing about self publishing. Yeah, and given what happened with the last book, like I said, even yeah. self-publishing things happen. So yeah, yeah, that makes so, perfect sense. But it's it's gonna be, you know, I guess you could say a series 
where the first one's iPhone photography focusing on macro. This one's going to be iPhone photography focusing on long exposure. And Hmm. I'm just going to try to show as many different ways you can do long exposure with the iPhone. And this is one of them. And this is probably my favorite one, Um, Mm -hmm. whether it's a waterfall or a river or stream, but moving water like this. And there's so many different ways you can show this. So um, I... At this point, so far, this is the working cover. And, and luckily, the water wasn't too high. I was able to stand right out in the middle, basically in the middle of if the river was completely rushing, I wouldn't be able to go out to where I was. Uh, but the water was, mm, okay. you know, it wasn't flowing that much that I couldn't get out kind of in the middle of the river and, and get right. some closer shots of some of the detail. So that is number two. Number three, this was on Canada Day. Um, in a town just a little bit north of here, uh, we went for a drive just to see what was going mm-hmm. on. And this one park area that we go to it was just packed with people. And it looks like this it was, was great weather too. So that makes sense. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. It was a little windy, but it was a beautiful day. And so it's hard to tell what's happening here, but what's happening is somebody had a soap suds kind of machine kind of like a, a a a gun or something like that, like a great big thing like this that just, just set out a stream of soap suds. And oh. these there was people getting plastered with them. There were a lot of bunch of kids standing there in their bathing suits mm. and they were just getting covered with soap bubbles and stuff. And and I thought it was quite comical. Um you can see some in the on the ground here in the foreground. Yeah. There's there's yeah. some soap suds laying there. And it was just really piling up in, in amongst these people. Um, it, it was just, it was just kind of a fun thing to take take a few pictures of. And I thought, well, I'm going to use reheld. Um, mm-hmm. I used the uh, the five X on my iPhone to to get closer without getting bubbles all over me. <laughs> and uh, you know, people had their kids there, their little kids in the strollers and things like that. But um, you know, it was just it was just a really cool thing and. With all the bubbles, they were moving so quick that it just looks like smoke almost. Um, mm-hmm. But but it wasn't smoke; it was just bubbles, bubbles flying everywhere, like mm. like like really fine foamy soap suds. So mm-hmm. it, it was oh, just a lot of fun. fun. Um, and, you know, and, and all I did with this was I just saturated it just a little bit, just to bring out the reds of some of the people's clothes because Canada Day, sure. a lot of people were in, were were wearing uh, red shirts right, and right. stuff which like makes that. sense so, which makes sense yeah yeah uh so just gonna get to the chat here real quick before we go to yours sure. uh yvonne camper rio vista says um i enjoy photography so much more since using my smartphone because i can see the results instantly and retake it if, if necessary they're accepted everywhere and people aren't intimidated uh you know she's got a good point um mm-hmm. And that goes that goes for any phone, not just the iPhone, but that goes for any phone. Uh, you know, it's becoming such a big thing, uh, such a popular thing and widely accepted thing to use use your phone for photography. I mean, you know, professionals are using them too. Uh, yeah, that, that that goes without saying. But um, but yeah, it's 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 so much fun and. and Mm-hmm. Again, that instant gratification is is big sometimes too. So, uh, okay. So, getting back to our recent photos, uh, we're gonna go with this one for your first. Okay. One. Yep. So this was taken in my backyard. Um, this is the top of the hill, and the tree that's um, that's neighbor's tree, but it kind of hangs over my bushes up there. Uh, it has a bit of a, I don't know what kind of flowers, but it just has a bit of a flower. It just has a bit of flowers on it sprinkled over. And I did use the RNI, not the arrow, but just the, just the regular RNI app, uh, mm-hmm. to add some filters to kind of emphasize the purple, the, the reddishness of the flowers. So it would stand out a little bit more and kind of desaturate the greens because it, 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 the greens kind of can overpower a lot. Yeah. So, but just doing that, I kind of, I just wanted to have those flowers just kind of out there. And you can see in the, the little barn shed that the person has on the right, you can see that reddish is kind of the, the filter going a little wild on shadow. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. 
Um, I don't think it distracts it too much, but yeah, it's, it's just like I said, just a, a way to get a little creative with the editing. And because when I looked at the the photo without editing, it's the, you couldn't really see the flowers that well. You know, they were kind of hidden. So I wanted a way to. And uh, the, the normal apps I were using, like Lightroom or PhotoMate or even the built-in photos app, just, just wasn't cutting it for having that pop, if you will, for the flowers yeah. that were out there. Yeah. And and once again, you have managed to make a summer image look like autumn. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It has that autumn vibe I, I, to I don't it. Know, you know? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm just sick of the heat. I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, I'll say yeah. this: a lot, a lot of the RNI filters, which is it's newer for me, so I'm using a little bit much. Um, they tend to have a lot of the the darker, kind of more autumn look to it, not yeah. so bright and vibrant. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it it's cool. It it's it does you know really bring out those flowers or those blossoms, and mm-hmm. um, I I would say mission accomplished with that filter for sure. Your second one. Yep. And this is also another one I did with the RNI filter. Uh, this is an older church. And actually, on my way to have my phone fixed, or really because my charging port and the pegs as part of the charging port were severely bent, uh, I got a new phone from Apple. Oh, thank yeah. You, right. Apple Care. Thank, thank you, Apple Care Plus. Yes. <laughs> uh, but this was me stopped at a stoplight. And oh, okay. I just liked the look of the church and kind of took a photo from the driver's seat while while we, while the red light was there. So it was safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I used touch retouch actually on the bottom right where the hedges are in dark shadow. There was a car there. Oh, OK. So I got rid of the car. And I'm trying to remember if there were any, and I'm actually looking at my phone. Uh, there was, I don't believe, let me, hold on, let me check one more time here. I'm trying, yep. Uh, there were telephone, there were uh, power lines uh, kind of going across the image, and there was a telephone pole on the right that I got rid of. Oh, okay. Uh, So I got rid of that with touch retouch and did a little changing with the um, um, uh, skeuomorphism of it. Oh, yeah. So I I made it, I basically straightened up the photo. It had a little bit of a tilt because of how close I was and the height of the bill, even though it's only, you know, you can see it's like a four four story tower there. It still was kind of leaning away. So I was able to use the build in cropping thing and just kind of straighten up the image a little bit there and the filter kind of, again like you said it, it gave it more of a, a maybe not autumn look maybe like midsummer uh yeah, because yeah. The, the grass was was definitely it was regular green grass but here it looked kind of it, it added to the worn out midsummer look to it when grass yeah. you know kind of just died when it gets hot and lack of rain but it also looks a little like like an aged photo. Yeah, is that yeah? That's the other thing. I, I would now I did do another edit where I kind of went full blown aged, and it just didn't turn out. Yeah, you know, it, trying to make it look like a postcard from like the nineteen twenties or nineteen thirties. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. or you know, like an old color, a, a very faded color postcard from back in the day. Yeah. Um, it just didn't work out. So, but no, I think I, I, I again, I was just kind of going for that, that particular look and getting more of a, a rougher image, uh, and more starkness to the, the, the brick, the red brick itself too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's a, it's a nice cool effect to it. Um, mm-hmm. well, I, I shouldn't say cool. It looks really warm. <laughs> it's a nice warm effect. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I, I like the, the detail in it and everything else. And, um, it, it's just a cool church, you know, mm-hmm. a, a nice architectural shot. Um, so your third one. Yep. And this was, I this is you want to talk about long exposure. This is a long exposure shot, also taken with Reheld. Okay. 
So the train was passing by, and I just wanted to get a shot of it was a it's a coal train just kind of passing by, but mm -hmm. it was long enough. And this is a kind of a flat area that as the train keeps passing by, by with the long photo, not only do the cars that were going in front of it kind of fade away since they're, you know, they're they're barely there for the shot, but the train it, it, it kind of blurs out the train. So you figure this is multiple train cars as it's going by. So yeah. you have that kind of repeating image on the side of the train. If you zoom into the train itself, you can see the CR <clears throat> and then the number underneath. Yeah. And that's kind of repeating as the train, as it's taking the multiple shots and the trains moving along. Yeah. And I did a lot of editing to give it that really weathered look with the sky looking oh, almost like it's an old photo where they had trouble with the chemicals for the sky. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you can see it goes from blue to green to white to, I mean, even yellow in there. So it's like it, the, 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 the processing was off. And to get the kind of the multiple layered look there for the frames, um, that was done in both Snapseed to give it one frame and then Camera Plus to give it another frame on top of it. Oh, okay. So those are kind of multiple frames on top of each other oh, that's to, cool. to get that look. And it almost reminds me of like of the, not even the, 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 the Polaroids that necessarily most people grew up on but the old old ones where you actually had to tear off you know they actually when it came out there was still a, a cover on it that you had to tear off after yeah. it was processed yeah not the yeah. ones from let's say the 80s where you just took it and you shook it when it was out but yeah. it came out and then there was this little paper you had to tear off and it had an it was almost like an extra framing uh, on top of just the white sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, the good old days, huh? <laughs> eh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I really like the uh the treatment that you've given this. Um you know, it 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 just says, it does look it looks it looks just like you said with with it had difficulty uh you know processing and and whatnot mm -hmm. and uh um uh, you know the the little specks along the side and all that stuff they really add to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just looks like a good old dated photo of a train that was going by and um yeah just uh, kind of cool how fast was the train going uh i think they generally go 20 30 miles an hour oh yeah there okay. there's a crossing not too far away right so they can't really go that fast and yeah. also it is it, it you can tell it's literally right on their side of a major road uh, yeah that's true is on the other side of the train tracks. Um, and there, you know, there's not really a barrier between, I mean, there's the guide rail, mm -hmm. but there's really not much of a barrier between this and the tra railroad tracks on this side. Admittedly, there's no sidewalk over there, but yeah, they, there's not much of a barrier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So they, they really, even though, and remember folks, Trains, if they want to stop, from the minute they say we're going to stop, we'll take around a mile or 1.6 kilometers uh, for the space units people to actually stop when they decide they want to stop. Mm -hmm. So that's even going slow. It's It can be an issue when it goes through a heavily populated area or heavily traveled area. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... a. Uh... Um, you know, not something you want to mess with getting in the way of a train, that's for sure. Uh, okay, well, now we will go with um, the members image. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got to find it here. There we go. And this is Mark Johnson's uh, really cool waterfall with a whole pile of different cascades that, um, you know... It's hard to say how high this is, but I would say, you know, it's probably a good couple hundred feet from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's just really uh, a, a wonderful cascade. 
Um, you know, so we don't know too much about this. This is why we're asking when you submit your images for, for this feature, you know, give us a little information about it. You don't have to say where it is. I guess that's a privacy thing, but um, you can if you want, uh, you know, maybe the state or whatever, just to, uh, or province or wh wherever you are. Um, it, it kind of a an idea of, of even what country it's from. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to guess that it's probably a reheld shot um, just by looking at it, or it could be slow shutter cam. It's hard to say. Uh, again, another reason to, to tell us what app you used to take the image and, mm -hmm. and then what app you did the edit in would be nice to know too. So, um, But Dave and I kind of agreed that this was probably the one that we're going to talk about. And uh, I think a crop... A little bit of a crop off the right hand side might have might have improved it just a little bit um, to keep the aspect ratio. Maybe just take a little off the top as well out of the sky, or maybe a little off the bottom instead, just to to get that that mm -hmm. you know there's a rock right at the very bottom that if you were to crop that off, uh, it, it would just kind of um, give it a. a you know, a little more aesthetically pleasing composition. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great image, nice, mm -hmm. like, nicely saturated. The, the sky is nice and blue. The grass is a nice green and um, uh, just a great image. And I don't blame you for, for wanting to, to choose this one, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was, a, I really, really like this image. And it was clear, um, the the water just having that wonderful, admittedly it's a waterfall, but it's sometimes really hard to get that misting look mm -hmm. while keeping everything else clear. And Mark did a great job on this. And I kind of like the pool at the bottom acting as kind of a, a pool of water, I should say, not the swimming pool, but. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, 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 the part down the bottom where it acts as an anchor. So you have all this action, 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 multiple directions. You know, it, it's going one direction and another, then another direction. But it then just going down to this calm down below. Yeah. And then yeah. you have, like, the, there's a light blue tinge to the water in the waterfall. But everything else is green. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's another example of, um, you know, being able to take a picture of, uh, a long exposure like this in what appears to be bright sunshine, uh, sunlight. Um, uh, you just couldn't do it with a traditional camera without filters and maybe multiple exposures and all this other stuff. Um, Dale Lotherington in the, in the chat says it is, um, something, Go something. For it. I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Uh, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, Twindy Fossen. That's pretty good, I think. <laughs> it's a yeah. waterfall in Voss municipality in Vestland County, Norway, according to a Google Google image search. So, yeah. um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, all the way from Norway. And and Mark, if you were if you live there, great. If you were visiting, that's that's cool. Um, but, you know, thank you for, for submitting that image and thank you to everybody who submitted images. Uh, we only, you know, we only have so much time to talk about these and, and we're just going to pick one for each episode going forward. But, um, you know, please submit them to the uh, comment section of the post that, that I put these in. Uh, it'll be all, it'll always be a featured post. So you can you'll always be able to find it. And uh, um, again, you know, it, it never hurts to put a little bit of information there about, you know, mm -hmm. the image, the camera you use, the, the, the app you used to take it or whatever, um, just so we can have a better idea of what to say about it and, and, and all that stuff. So, um, all right. Well, I think we've uh, got ourselves a show and, and you know what? Mm -hmm. We managed to keep it down with to just over an hour, <laughs> which is good. I, I kind of like that. Yep. Um so well, that definitely will make it easier for for you for the um for the editing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um yeah, it's it's uh you know, I'm going to be up for a little bit tonight 
getting it ready to put out for tomorrow morning. Uh, and again, folks, sorry it's late. It's uh, normally out Wednesday morning here in uh, in in my time zone. And um, uh, you know, so wherever you are, it's a day late for sure. And um, you know, apologies for that. But uh, you know, if you're in the U.S. Uh, tomorrow or, or when this comes out, you know, it'll be coming out on uh, Independence Day. So enjoy your your holiday and uh, yeah, give the old salute <laughs> and and uh, stay safe around any fireworks and all that stuff. Yep. And, uh, uh, you know, just just enjoy the day. And, and uh, I guess they Dave. Oh, oh uh, it, uh, again, you know, these all these images will be on the Facebook group or, or on the Facebook page. Sorry, I got to get those two straight. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll put a post up about the episode with the images so that if you don't get a chance to see them, um, they'll, they'll be on the Facebook page. And and again, for those who might be looking for the website, it's not going to be updated any longer because I ran out of space on it. And that's why I made, it, made the Facebook page. So um, go to uh, Facebook and look for the iPhoneography podcast Uh that's the name of the web page. And you can even you could even use the old URL, iphonography.ca. It should land you there, hopefully. And um you can you can have a look at the images from the page. So uh I guess that's it. I guess uh we will see everybody on the next one. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Oh, welcome, Greg, and have a good one, everyone.